Hi everyone and welcome back to the Hobby Dude 007 channel. We're on our way home from vacation, decided we'd stop at uh, Petty's Garage and the Petty Museum here in Level Cross, North Carolina. Let's go in and take a look around. As we take a quick overview of the compound, to the right you'll see a picnic area and the placards say those ghost cars, the white cars over there, are Daytona 500 winners. So you see uh, Pete Hamilton's number 40 uh, Daytona winner and uh, the 73 Dodge Charger of Richards. Uh, notice in the parking lot here, <laughs> the, um, the burnout marks and the donuts in the parking lot, of course, they do build performance vehicles here. And here's the main entrance uh, to get into the garage and to the museum. And as we go in, the first thing you're going to see is the gift shop to the right, and you're facing the 1984 replica of the 200 Win car. Um, the museum, I've never been able to get out of the gift shop, and just like this time, I picked up a new shirt, uh, another to our wardrobe, a few other collectibles, and um, another tin sign for my office uh, that's autographed by the king. And as you come in, like I said, you see the 84 uh, replica of the 200 win car from Curb Motorsports. Uh, and you're going to notice the paint job on all of these things is just immaculate. And we're going to get back to these trophies here in just a second. And um, this is just one beautiful car here. Here are 10 cup championship trophies, three of uh, Lee's and seven of Richard's, the giant bobblehead of Richard there. Uh, Richard's Martinsville win uh, grandfather clock. And you notice a lot of collectibles here. There's everything from uh, firearms, small arms to rifles uh, that are part of Richard's personal collection. There's pocket watches that were Lee's uh, and Richard's. Um, a lot of these firearms were gifts and as we go in this room, I'm a collector myself, so I have a, a great appreciation for these things. But there's several unique things about these, uh, these weapons. And that is, if you'll notice, over 90% of these things, and it's kind of hard to see the placards by each of the weapons, but the serial numbers are serial number 43. And some of them are 43 of 500, 43 of 100, serial number 43 of 1,000. Um, but, but a cute little thing there. Um, so enjoy. Also in this collection, uh, you'll see, here is Richard's lifetime uh, membership to the NRA, but there are also some matched set of dueling pistols, quite a few sets actually, uh, which I, I'm fascinated by those of the flintlock or the single um, cap and balls. As you go out of this room of the firearm collection, straight across is just a portion of the rarest of Linda Petty's uh, doll collection. In the old museum in downtown Randleman, there was a huge section of these. And back over to our right, you've got some more pocket watches. You've got uh, some more sidearms. Um, just beautiful stuff. And up on top of that case, you'll see a lot of the engraved silver, which were gifts and awards um, for various, various, rec various recognition.
as we turn around here, you'll see a lot of the uh, most popular driver awards, uh, different other awards and uh, recognition crystal. And then this over here is civic awards, uh, including up on the pedestal here uh, that was presented by President Reagan, the Presidential Medal of Freedom that was uh, given to the king um, back during President Reagan's time. And before we get into the main thing, these hot rods, uh, I want to share with you a couple other things. There's some complete uh, collections of die cast all the way through the museum, and we're going to be looking at a lot of them. This one is the uh, Franklin Mint Complete Collection. And you'll see, I think there are four or five petty cars in there, but that's a complete collection from Franklin Mint. And then you've got uh, other manufacturers that we'll be looking at as we go through uh, and all around. These tires are for sale. They're autographed by the king. They're 50, 75, and the dirt tire is 100. All the proceeds go to the uh, Victory Junction Camp for children. And as we get over here to this beautiful Monte Carlo, of course, in 1978, Richard went from the Dodge Magnum over to the uh, Chevy Monte Carlo. As we look down the side, I want to get a shot of this, uh, this front end here. And as you look straight down the side, look at the flare or the blisters on the fenders down through here. Um, love it, love it. And of course, the paint is just beautiful as you go down the side here. The white... Uh, rims with the uh, dual stripes and that rear fender blister is a little more pronounced than the front um, doesn't look like it's flared so much as it is just like kind of a little blister sticking out there um, the dry brake fuel system and overflow. I really never noticed this, and I've seen this car at other events out, outside with the hood up, but I've never really paid attention till today. Notice how the, the bumper's two pieces and it's welded together, as is the top of the spoiler. That's one great thing about going to museums and stuff. You always seem to, to find stuff that you didn't notice the first time. Um, that fender flare again. This was unique for me because the dash itself typically is always the flat black. Well, this dash is flat petty blue on the top and the front with the exception of the gauge faces. You saw the electronic ignitions down there, the blue shifter ball, fire bottle, the rear differential cooler. As I recall, this is a Laughlin chassis, too. It's got the step up to the uh, rear window bulkhead. And notice the safety net is what I call it the string type, but uh, that is also available through uh, plastic performance products for us modelers. This is a 66 Belvedere, the King's uh, winningest car. Uh, won 27 races in 1967, 10 in a row, which I know records are meant to be broken, but I'm not sure that one will ever be. Um, and it won the 1969 championship, if I didn't say that. Um, just my favorite petty cars are the, the 70 flat nose Roadrunner and the 70 one and I think this one will be my third favorite. Nothing against the STP colors. It's just the first races I ever went to with my dad, this is the colors I saw. And this is the ones I fell in love with first. But I do love the STP colors. Compared to the new cockpits, look at this thing. Isn't that something? Uh, stock dash, uh, dash top, um, wrapped stock steering wheel, uh, stock floor pan. And by the way, if you want to replicate this floor pan, get the Ravel Pro Modeler uh, Dodge Charger 6970 uh, Charger. Uh, it's got that same floor pan, and I'm, I'm sure there's some other models that have those in them, but that's my favorite. Uh, the red uh, gas cap on the lanyard. And um, the rear suspension setup, you'll notice it's the dual shock setup. And instead of the double bars, it's on one bar that runs the length of the uh, the roll cage and uh, main chassis. And the shafts are on old round shifter boots. Um, cool little touch. And there's your fuel filler, pretty much stock tail light sections. And I love the way they glazed or glassed in that little uh, spoiler on the deck lid. 
Uh, check this out from this side. And I think it was the 1970 flat nose that also had that on it. Uh, the great big exhaust dumps. Um, and I've got some really good pictures of this at other events with a hood up. And um, just a, this is a cool car. Really a cool car. And as we turn, we're going to see some of Lee Petty's trophies and awards uh, along this wall. And we're also going to see the first Daytona 500 winning car, the Oldsmobile that Lee drove uh, to the first Daytona win. This is unique. All the trim is on it. It's got the stock uh, door panels in, uh, stock bench seat with the passenger side back removed. Notice there's no side protection on the roll bars just in case it rolls over, but nothing in the sides. Those windows actually crank up and down, stock steering wheel. Notice the gear shift is on the column. And this thing is a land yacht. It is huge. Uh, other uh, trophies and awards of, of Lee's. Great looking little die cast, I think, here. And uh, another model. This car's got some really unique features to it as well. The exhaust pipes on this car come out above the back bumper, and I'll show you that in just a second. Some of the Hall of Fame stuff for Lee, Maurice, Dale Inman, and Richard. The mechanic awards there, uh, just just different things in recognition of, of these four guys and what they contributed to the sport of NASCAR racing. And these exhaust pipes I was talking about that come out above the bumper, someone told me that these, when someone ran up on the back of them, you're dumping heat right about radiator level, so you would cause a car to overheat. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, makes sense considering where they are. This little sitting area here has a video running that uh, talks about the uh, 1965 season and uh, the time they went drag racing. And we'll look at that uh, a little bit more later. Um, other things that have been donated and collected by the family. Um, there, there are just all kinds of stuff. Keys to the city, uh, honorary police badges, belt buckles. Uh, there's basketball signed by Coach Dean Smith at uh, North Carolina. There's one of uh, um, God, there's the tennis shoes signed by Michael Jordan and, and some other athletes from the North Carolina area. A lot of great pictures here of, uh, of Richard's uh, heyday in the 70s, 60s and 70s. And as we go over to this side, you'll see from the movie Cars, um, replicas of uh, Mrs. The King, Linda Petty. Uh, she was the voice of uh, the 69 station wagon there in uh, the movie Cars. Uh, this is a great little tribute area for Linda, and she was the first lady of NASCAR. She was the founder of the... Uh, uh, NASCAR Wives Auxiliary or Association. Um, she had a lot of awards back through here of her own. And um, beside that is the Dynaco car that of uh, the King, uh, the Superbird. And uh, cute little setup there. Then we have the 1981 Buick Regal, um, the Daytona 500 winner from 1981, the last Daytona 500. Um, always like the body style there. Then we have that fast sitting still look car, the Pontiac 2 Plus 2. It never won a race, but I always thought it was a good looking car. I know we had uh, two guys locally that drove uh, brand new ones around back in the day. And uh, they were unique, and I'm sure they're worth a lot of money even today. This is a little children's sitting area. Got some coloring books and some colors. More die cast cars. Uh, from different manufacturers. Uh, there's the car haulers down on the bottom. Um, just some really unique stuff. And then, of course, over the counter, uh, diecast tractor collection uh, is the tail end of the uh, 2 plus 2. You get a good look at the window, the five slot. Uh, chrome wheels. Over the opera window, you'll notice the, the hole that's got the plug in it where the radio antenna was. And I know a lot of teams put that in the center of the roof or toward the back, back in that era. Uh, but I thought it was unique where they had that one placed. 
Now we're going out of this part of the museum. We're going to go over where you see the red door straight across to the main part. And as we're opening the door here, there's a garage door open to my left and out comes a Hellcat. Dodge Challenger Hellcat. And let's see, gates open. gonna see if he's gonna do any burnout or uh, any donuts over there and of course if it's a Hellcat it's probably at least seven or eight hundred horsepower if it's almost stopped and now he's headed out to the road so we'll go on back over and go in the main uh, building here now this building was built in 1969 to house the Fords and uh, later uh, we just take a quick zip around the uh, compound again from inside but uh, this building was for the Fords in 69 and then later for Richard and Kyle's uh, general maintenance on their uh, race cars as we go in here immediately to our right um, are some of the awards and trophies that Kyle won his uh, trophies from Rockingham as well as some of his pole awards, things like that. And then you've got the number 45 uh, Dodge Charger that he drove the last two years of his driving career. And then there's the Wood Brothers Thunderbird that he drove under, with uh, Sitco sponsorship. A few other trophies of his. There's several driving suits back through here too. And where that exit sign is to the right there, well, I got out of view there. Uh, we'll get back up to it here in just a second. That little blue door is uh, the door I opened when I was either 14 or 15 when my dad brought me up here. And um, let's, let's just pan around here a minute. The hands car from Victory Junction Camp. As we go around the corner, that blue door is what I was saying is, is that's the door I opened and where that T model is, is where uh, those uh, number 11 Buddy Baker cars were sitting um, the first time I made that trip in 1971. This one sixth scale clay model up top here is um, of a 1971 Roadrunner. And at one of the other visits, someone mentioned that they thought it was a wind tunnel test car, which would make sense uh, back in that day anyway. But uh, I honestly don't know. If anybody knows that for sure, uh, stick something in the comments. But it's really kind of cool. And down here we have, if it, there was a toy made, whether it was a pedal car, a board game, which there are some down here, if there was a plastic or model car or slot car that's in this section here of just collectibles and also notice on the pile of models are salvino's jr models are right on the top um really cool stuff and i've got several of the slot cars that i don't run on the slot car tracks but um of the petty cars that i have collected over time too that are the carrera and the Ravel. And this uh, 1926 T model is um, one that Lee picked up later in life. It, it was just like the one that he went uh, on dates with, with Elizabeth Richard and uh, Maurice's mom back in the day. He uh, actually traded a horse, according to the sign, <laughs> traded a horse for this car. And Next is a 1933 Dodge, which is part of Richard's uh, personal collection. Uh, a guy had this at Martinsville in the 70s, and apparently Richard just fell in love with it, because I did when I saw it. But uh, he bought it from the guy. Beautiful, beautiful car. And next we have that uh, 1964 uh, Barracuda, uh, the 43 Junior, or Outlawed, uh, known by either one of them fuel injected Hemi and if you've never seen Mopar magazine's uh, special edition on this several pages under the hood inside the car beautiful stuff for the era uh, in 65 for drag cars I love the the blue tinted front and rear windows and the headlights 
Um, this is just a classy looking little drag car. Really sharp. And next up is Richard's first ride, which was also, it, it's a hard top, but it's also a convertible. You really can't see it in the video, but there are four wing nuts that are huge uh, right at the windshield and in the back. And you just take those off, lift the top off, and you had a convertible class that NASCAR ran at, the, at that time. And that's what they did. So a uh, Goodyear and a Firestone dirt tire. This uh, cool suit right here was developed originally for helicopter pilots in Vietnam and uh, Richard actually wore one for a while. It pumped cold water through the suit so it'd keep your drivers cool. Um, a wedge and of course that gorgeous Hemi engine. Notice it's a dark blue block. Uh, most of the accents are the darker blue on that. I thought that was a go-kart at first, but it's chain-driven, but it's, I, I don't see how it's remote either. This engine was outlawed by NASCAR, and Maurice brought it home and stuck it in a street rod for a while. And then next up is um, the King's last ride. It still has the burn marks and the bends and all that stuff in it that he made his final lap at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. Uh, back in 92 and I like it when they leave things in their original original condition and his last driving suit and helmet on top now when Petty's garage first opened they needed a show car and this was it uh, you'll notice that it's got the Dodge by Petty scripts in the hood this thing is just beautiful 426 Hemi um, beautiful script down the side. We're going to get around to the side where we can see it in a minute. These motorcycles are the motorcycles that Kyle and Richard drive on uh, their um, charity rides uh, for Victory Junction. And of course, there's uh, Adam's uh, last car and um, gone way too soon, way too soon. Great young man. Now, here's the script on the Challenger. Beautiful car. This case commemorates um, Dale Earnhardt and Richard's seven championships. You see the hat that's seven and seven there. Uh, has both of them on these mugs and just a collection like that. And you know, I like it when you got sportsmen that recognize each other in appreciation of their, not a, I'm sure they're competitors, but they're also friends. This case is just a, a thing for STP, an appreciation of STP. And there's another one around the corner here that we'll see um, that just honors STP. More die casts. Um, these, a lot of these die casts are from different eras too, uh, and different manufacturers. So. It, it's a unique collection of all of this stuff. Now, as we start down this wall, we know that he won 200 wins, but there's also so many awards of most popular driver, uh, achievement awards, things like that. So if we want to do a Sesame Street edition, we can start counting, and we'll bring in the count. But <laughs> but I, there's way more than 200 awards in this, this museum. Um, a lot of, of honors to the king. And as we go down through here, let me say this. I hope you're enjoying this little tour, but there's no substitute for actually being here and seeing this stuff. If it's at all possible and you can get uh, in the area or in the area sometime, make sure you, you plan on and come by and see this because the grandeur of, of what you see and the history of it um, you can't you can't just see this in pictures or in videos. You, you really need to experience it for yourself because this is just a great, great place. It's a family outfit, and you can see the love and the care that goes into about everything in all of these buildings. Um, it, it's really an experience all by itself. Now, 
Now, right here, you've got some other die casts, but these are unique. You've got some collectible plates at the bottom, and you've got motorcycles, uh, even bicycle stagecoaches. That are, these are all die cast collectibles. Here's another brand. I think this was Lincoln Mint, uh, but I'm not sure. But you see, there are some petties in there, too. Um, the airplanes, I thought, were a unique touch, but the 443s. Uh, Diecast collections. Now this case has some commemorative cars up at the top and the next two shelves down are model cars that uh, folks have donated to the museum and that they display. Over the years I've seen these cars many many times and a lot of the same ones. Uh, and it's good to see that they they appreciate the the builders enough to and the fans enough to leave them. This is a mug collection. Uh, looks like Steins of uh, champions. I think it's the Winston Cup champions. And then of course you have the coffee mugs and Steins uh, collectibles that have been made over the years. And here's another STP case that honors uh, STP. And I've seen the STP Indy cars before, but uh, I've never really paid that close attention to them. But there's a couple right here that, that uh, I came back and looked at uh, off video. And, and I got to admit, these are really sharp. Richard also has a lot of honorary doctorates. This is a 9-11 tribute here. And uh, of course you got the Pepsi bottles and the Coke cans and bottles that were the race related stuff. Richard's cap and gown from high school. Uh, he does from different universities where he's spoken have honorary doctorates. And a lot of that stuff is in here too. And right here we see Richard's high school diploma. And below that, a letterman's jacket and it looks like he lettered in four different things and he's got some achievement stars on there too um, so he's he's quite the sportsman some of those coke can collections and bottles and here again uh, competitors and friends uh, as recognizing the wood brothers challenge coins and die casts uh, and like I said I, I really appreciate the fact that they kind of honor each other uh, as, as friends and competitors. This is uh, autographed footballs on, and helmets from, uh, well, there's baseballs too, uh, from um, pro and college sports. More trophies. If you lost count, you got to start all over, so back up. <laughs> Some beautiful, beautiful bikes here. Forgive my finger there. I didn't realize that was getting in the way. Back over here on this side, we have an area that's called Adam Petty's Garage. Uh, and of course, that Sprint PCS car, you've got his go-kart there, um, his uh, Legends car back there in the back. And again, sad that he's gone way too soon. And the uh, Pontiac Grand Prix that, I, as I recall, he won his first race in the Spree car. Uh, love the Hoosier tires there. And all these fluorescent colors, you've got the fluorescent red, the green, the yellow, uh, then the purple. Uh, it's a, it's, you can't miss the car on the racetrack, that's for sure. Over on this side is a sitting area. Uh, there's a video you can watch, and I'm, oop, I'm going the wrong way. I'm going backwards, but from 1949 to present to today that you have the history that you can read on, and there is a video area there. I love the bumper car, and um, this is an old um, um, golf cart that they apparently used at one time to run around the shop, but there is a sign on there that you're welcome to sit and get pictures and, and uh um, kind of relax here 
And as we go back over here, we've got some 64th scale die casts, another collection. I would imagine another uh, manufacturer. This is reminiscent of the the fan appreciation tour, the 92 car, but I noticed there's a few decals, the Pepsi decals. Some of them aren't on there. Um, but nonetheless, a beautiful car. And you see the oil sump tank back here with a cooling duct on it. And... Uh, the fire bottle behind the seat and there's the battery box back there too the uh, blue window net down now this next car with the bare metal sides and the, the hood and all this is a test car and I'll, I'll show you the sign up closest a suspension test car but notice the wells down the center of the the door area and the a pillar there where it was just tacked up and welded i want to buy this kit um uh and i'll show you what i mean here in just a second but um the test cars usually were in primer or something like that but i want to see if i can find me the acme race kit here uh, i'd love to buy one of these uh, maybe i need to get a hold of wiley e. coyote see if he can hook me up with uh acme <laughs> but you notice the pop rivets where the nose is put on there in the corner um, cool little test car though and let's see I'm sure it's yeah uh, test car from the early 1990s uh, to test suspension but um, kind of cool kind of cool and man here we go 1972 STP Dodge Charger I've got pictures of this from other events with the hood up and the deck lid up uh wow this thing is is just it's that classic dodge charger got the flat grill across the front and another one of the commemorative cars here And if you didn't know, they also ran, Petty Enterprises ran the uh, Craftsman Truck Series and had some success with it. They had several wins, as I recall, in uh, the Truck Series. Nothing like seeing that Dodge by Petty on the hood. And Richard Petty's 50 years of uh, in racing. Um, beautiful charger and the hands car from uh, the Victory Junction camp the Downey Dodge Charger Let's take a walk back up here and head toward the actual garage that's active. Um, Petty's garage is a working garage. Uh, as we go through this door back here, uh, they sell cars, they restore. Uh, you could bring a vintage car or a new car and have it hopped up or uh, restored back here in the old main shops. Um, as we go through, immediately to the left, you're going to see a Mustang. And notice the Petty's Garage logo on the back. Uh, the Petty Blue pinstripes. And I'll tell you something about that. But I want you to look at the paint job on this Mustang as we walk up. My reflection in the paint. This thing's like a mirror. Um, this is the black edition. And look at the trophies up on top of that thing there. So it, this just never ends. I don't think they have enough room. Uh, the Black Edition 5.0 is supercharged, uh, 1,000 horsepower. And again, you can see my reflection. I love the shifter ball in there. It's petty blue. I think it's either a five or six speed. I'm gonna. I'll look at the uh, window sticker here for a second. But this thing is just absolutely beautiful. Now I'm a Mopar guy, but I have to have a great appreciation for this thing too. Uh, this is a beautiful piece of work.
Petty's garage across the windshield. Now inside these scallops, and those pinstripes are actually painted on, and inside of each of those scallops, and you can't see it on the video, uh, check out that carbon fiber on the ground effects on the air dam. But inside those scallops is, and, and you just, uh, I wish I could get it where you could see it, but there are just microscopic almost uh, petty blue flecks inside those those scallops and they're really something this thing is um i think it was a thousand or twelve hundred horsepower we'll get back to that in a minute but uh this is another um, dodge challenger hellcat um custom scoop for the front the hellcat emblem on the fenders like the one that that went out of the parking lot a little earlier um, by the way, this thing has a price tag of 83000 on it. Um, but for what all is in it, eh, I can kind of see that. Um, beautiful paint on this one, the same thing. And you notice the metallic maroon, kind of kind of reddish maroon. Just a beautiful, beautiful finish on this thing. So you need to bring your checkbook, come on down, and get you one of these puppies. Um, this has got the custom flares. And we'll go back to the main garage here. Parts department is on the left. And uh, bring, like I said, bring your checkbook so you can get you the Demon uh, Hellcat there. And uh, parts department, and they're also a Continental Tire dealer too. And off to our right is the break room. And some cornhole boards. And as we step up here to the main garage, this is as far as you can go because it is, again, a working garage. Uh, I think I counted this time 11 cars in here, whereas I have seen the least amount of cars I've ever seen in here is eight. Um, there's a charger up on the rack, a truck, a challenger here. There's a Dodge Charger. A, Camaro, white Camaro back in the back, uh, a red Challenger up there, a black Challenger here. Back over in the corner, you really can't see it, but is the 64 Belvedere. Um, I tried to zoom in on that engine sitting on the stand, and I, I just couldn't get far enough on it. But you'll see that here in just a second. Yeah, you just can't get close enough to it. Um, but that's Petty's Garage, the Performance Garage. Performance vehicles since 1949. As we go out to wrap up our tour, these two vehicles, the window stickers say they're a property of uh, Kyle Petty. It's a 51 Chevy pickup and a 1948 Packard. Uh, Packard is just, that's a classic looking thing. And talk about a land yacht. Not real hip on the color, but hey, it's factory, so yeah. Um, and then as we, we go up to take a look at where it all started, everything that we just looked at started in this little A-frame building up here. And I don't know if these cars are customers' cars or if they're employees' cars, um, but both of these cars, the, the white cars, the Challenger and the Charger, both have 392 Hemis that are supercharged. Um, Look at the paint job on the bottom side of that hood. Actually, I don't think that one is supercharged. But, uh, nice little Mustang. And as I was saying, where everything we just looked at started was in this building right here in 1949 this was lee petty engineering uh, and it was the first shop it was an old reaper shed and uh, it's also a historical landmark and inside here there's a lot of the original tools um, a lot of the original well the original scales which i think they called them tractor scales or something but um, not sure, but the car is sitting on four of those scales. Um, a lot of pictures and the numbers of the spaces around there that tell what it is. I love the Royal Crown Cola drink machine back in the back. 
um, RC Cola. And if I could have just found a moon pie laying around there, I might have jumped over the, the counter there. But the old Plymouth's sitting there, and uh, it all started right here. Hadn't this been fun? Guys, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Every time we stop, every time we have a blast. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.